At the turn of the 20th century, almost all electrical engineering was power engineering. As the century unfolded, the generation and distribution of electrical energy was key to the development of our modern technological society. The continuing technological revolution will not be possible without sophisticated, innovative solutions for reliable power. Electricity powers the internet and other technologies. If there's no juice, there's no internet. Today, power engineering has evolved into a highly technical field that is attracting engineers with wide ranges of skills and interests. Power engineers work in production, distribution, controls, communication, electric vehicles, and renewable energy. They work on environmental issues and on Wall Street. Some are consultants. Others work for major industries, ranging from petroleum refineries to computer manufacturers. Power engineering is changing rapidly, and the most profound change may well be utility deregulation, the lifting of price controls, and the breaking up of the monopolies that have controlled the electrical utility business from the beginning. The power companies are going to have to go to a free market. They are going to sell the power to their customers within freer rules than they have done before. So the pricing, which wasn't a factor a few years back, now is a factor. People just have to come in and compete for the right to use that transmission system. We have to respond much more quickly to um, the changes um, in the marketplace. And as a result of that, um, there's a lot of things that are happening that are, that are interesting not only from an engineering standpoint but also from a career path standpoint, I'd say. And there are a lot of new job opportunities out there which are in the, in the area for independent power producers, in energy brokers, um, even investment companies uh, are interested in getting some background in power systems in order to be able to evaluate stocks uh, of utilities. Utilities may have a reputation as conservative and traditional, but today they're going high-tech in a big way. This is Northern States Power. Uh, I work for Northern States Power here in Minneapolis, and we're a company that covers uh, five states in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and North and South Dakota. We have over a million customers, electric customers, and half a million gas customers. I'm an engineer who uh, basically designs and engineers substations like these. We do uh, new substations and um, maybe changes to existing substations. What's changing now is that a lot of the industry is very, becoming very high-tech. A lot of microprocessor-based equipment and electronics and uh, a lot of computer-based equipment. So that's what really excited me about it. In power engineering, you can work anywhere from uh, doing what I do in substations to maintenance to uh, planning, planning where you need power. Um, uh, you can work on a distribution side with lower voltages or like, like we do with higher voltages or transmission lines. So there's a, a wide variety of areas that you can work, work in. High-tech solutions to old problems are providing new career opportunities for power engineers. In the past, when something went wrong with an underground power cable, the solution was to dig the whole thing up. Now the engineers at UPTI have come up with a better solution. We are doctors of underground cable. Um, we test different types of cables, all different types of cables. An underground cable is much like a, a per human being, actually. Each cable is very unique, everyone's different, and we come in and be a doctor for it. We apply a, a signal to that cable and we wait for reflections to come back from that signal and by interpreting the way these reflections and the signal looks on our computer we're able to determine a lot of things about the cable whether there's a splice where two cables have been put together um, whether there's a damaged place to the cable how long the cable is and what's important to us especially is is there a damaged place in the cable and if so how bad is the damage that way we can tell the company where to dig up the cable and replace maybe just a small section of it 
and that saves them a lot of money. They don't have to wait till the cable fails and replace the whole thing. Siemens is a multinational company that produces products ranging from computer chips to medical devices. Our customers typically are utility companies, power companies. Um, we develop the software that they use to monitor their systems. Um, my work is in the network applications area, which deals basically with uh, state estimation, power flow algorithms, um, fault calculations. I guess what you're looking at here is a one-line diagram of our system and the programs that we, that I particularly write, will use this information um, to determine the state of the power system, do security assessment, that type of thing on the, on the power system. The system is so complex that one has to have very powerful computers to help solve and even operate uh, utility and the entire system today. Electric motors move everything from trains to elevators. At Baldor, power engineers develop and improve on the design of the electric motor and motor drives. It's nice to have a job where there's variety in your, in your work. What brings me here every day is the chance to do something different even though it may be related to something I've done before, there's always different twists and always different ways of doing it. Ways of improving what, we're, what we've already done. Ways to get uh, new solutions to old problems. I design electronics for motor drives, particular circuits that go into motor drives. I design brushless DC drives uh, specifically. And I also work with um, compliance issues, UL, CE, make sure our, our, our products um, don't emit too much noise and fit all the safety regulations. IBM was there at the beginning of the computer revolution and so were their power engineers. This particular plant we develop um, systems for e-business. We develop servers, we develop uh, large processors, multi-processor systems. We develop some disk drive and mainly we provide the tools for e-business. Uh, working on power supplies for computers is a real challenge because they want them completely invisible. Silent both in terms of electromagnetic radiation and weightless, noiseless, everything. They want it completely invisible. You never have the luxury of just making a 40 pound power supply. Lab work is really nice. It breaks up the monotony from being in the office. You get to see how what you designed really works or doesn't work. Um, opportunities for a little spark is always nice. Um, the power electronics group here at IBM sort of has an unofficial nickname of the power dogs. Power dogs. Um, I'm not real sure why they're dogs, but it's a pretty tight family and they really identify with each other and try to live up to their name of being able to deliver good products. Every large industry has a consuming need for power generation. The Exxon refinery at Baton Rouge is one of the world's largest petroleum refineries with a huge appetite for electrical power. I like uh, my particular position because I, I have a real good diversity between computer work, uh, design work with drawings and actually uh, going out in the field and, and, and getting to work outside and, and really get to see my projects come to life. And as a power engineer, I get to interact not only with fellow engineers but also uh, with the electricians out in the field who are doing the work uh, with the, the contractors and with other engineers in general, such as mechanical, civil, uh, chemical engineers. Deregulation has spawned many new leading edge power software companies. Alstom hires power engineers to guide its software development, to market the product, and work with customers on installation and maintenance. The challenge for me is to bridging the gap of software engineering and power system engineering because our, our, our business is to develop software for electric utilities and a lot of power system engineering, uh, power system engineering uh, folks does not have a lot of software background 
And on the other hand, the software folks may not have a lot of uh, engineering background to support uh, a, a more consistent development of the software. I work uh, not only with software developers within Alstom Esca, uh, but also with the end user, the customers, the end users of the software, um, helping them test it, helping uh, to install the software, helping to train them on, on how to use the software. Uh, it's a very challenging, exciting time because the power industry is demanding uh, highly efficient, uh, high performance, real-time applications to keep the, the power grid operating effectively and reliably. At the same time, they're dealing with the electronic commerce issues of how am I uh, opening up my communications to, to the internet. And as a result, one of the applications we've worked on is, is the world's largest e-commerce application for the reservation of transmission in North America. LDEC power engineers make power equipment that fits very tight specifications under extremely harsh environments. We, uh, we do power equipment, specialized power equipment for uh, aircraft industry, some military, some commercial. We make uh, battery chargers for uh, aircraft. We make a, a kind of power supply that, uh, that produces the, the main 28-volt bus that's used in all airplanes. It's just a, it's, it's a basic power supply, it, but it's a workhorse, and it provides the aircraft power for just about everything. Uh, avionics, uh, in-flight entertainment, uh, you know, lights the bathrooms, everything. So it, what we do, you, you see in every airplane that, uh, that you fly on because our systems are part of a bigger system and those bigger systems are limited by the weight that they can carry, the, the heat that they can put out. So we have a lot of constraints and those constraints are getting tighter and tighter as the overall system constraints are getting tighter. So I say one of the biggest challenges is making our part of that system uh, the most efficient, the lightest and the best thermally it can be. Black & Veatch is a multinational company whose power engineers consult with industries and utilities that want to build power plants. We also do some small um, retrofit type work. We'll do uh, some work for Chrysler, Ford, etc., uh, automotive in this area of the country. Right now I'm working on a combined cycle plant in Florida, which is it's a new power plant that has both combustion turbines and steam turbines. Um, the cool thing is when you do go to the site and you see this, the, the scale of the things that you actually design. I mean, you're, you stand next to a transformer and it's 30 foot tall. And it's like, wow, doesn't look like that on paper, you know? And I see a lot of different aspects, not just in power, but of all electrical engineering, because we touch on everything. I mean, there's electronics involved, there's communications involved, but it's all within the whole power area. Many of the new generation of engineers are committed to environmental issues. In the automobile industry, this translates into developing non-polluting ways of powering automobiles. Think Technologies, uh, or Think rather, is a new brand by Ford Motor Company. They wanted a way to separate the uh, environmentally friendly vehicles away from the normal internal combustion engines and give us our own identity. And Think is that new brand name, just like Jaguar or Ford or Lincoln or Mercury. I'm working on a, a fuel cell vehicle that's uh, release date is, I, I can't exactly tell you when it's going to be released, top secret, uh, but it'll come out in let's say the next uh, six years and it's a, a, a fuel cell powered vehicle and so you go to the gas pump and you, you fill up with hydrogen and you go down the street and the only thing that comes out of your tailpipe is uh, water and steam and uh, a little air, that's it. The greatest challenge of my job is probably figuring out which direction to head and what projects I take on because they're all so interesting. It sounds really cheesy, but it's really true. Um, my department and the, the vehicle that I'm working on, there's so many interesting things that I'd, I'd love to get my hands into and, and learn about. My job uh, is in the EV or electric vehicle driveline engineering, and I'm responsible uh, for the program management in the uh, driveline area. Uh, and that is uh, coordinating with engineers, uh, suppliers, designers, draftsmen, 
to make sure the product is functioning as designed. I'm oftentimes out in the garage or out back. Uh, there's travel involved often. Uh, sometimes if there's a concern in the field, uh, we'll travel directly to the customer. Um, I think the coolest thing about my job is uh, being able to work in a high technology environment, uh, being at the cutting edge of technology, uh, being able to work on things that uh, you know uh, regular people uh, don't even know about yet and they're going to see on the road five years from now and think of, boy, I wonder how they did that. That must have been difficult. Or, Man, that's really fascinating. To be on the front end of that kind of technology, it's really nice. There's a lot of applications that go on in power engineering, computers, telecommunications, um, economics, and so while you're going to use your traditional electrical engineering background, you also want to be flexible and see how these things affect the actual engineering side of the job. It is necessary for students now to know that power engineering in the past has changed and that aspects of financing and marketing play a big role you know, because of deregulation. I would give the advice to get a global foundation. There is a tendency nowadays, students always wants to be, want to be the specialist in the one hot uh, area, uh, t technical area, which might be a programming language or a certain computer tool or a certain uh, power system application. I do think undergraduate studies uh, are there to give you a global background and to prepare you uh, to l do lifelong learning to uh, acquire new knowledge whenever it is necessary. You have to be adaptive and flexible in order to adapt to the changing industrial uh, environment. And the last thing, you have to be able to communicate your technical knowledge to other technical, non-technical colleagues. So having good uh, communication skills, uh, writing even uh, second or third language uh, would be very, very important uh, for the future of uh, uh, undergraduate power system engineer. There's a lot of new things happening in electric power. Um, deregulation is changing some of the market dynamics, and whenever that happens, people are looking for new ways to make money, to save money. I think you have to have a, a larger understanding of, of a lot more technologies to do power electronics than you do just, say, processor development or memory development. It requires that you understand the analog portion of designing something. It requires that you understand the digital portion. And you have to perform a marriage of these technologies in your mind and bring these things together. So I think, I think it allows you to use a lot more of the fundamentals. You can almost work anywhere. With a power engineering background, I, I could work for a utility in, in any part of the country. You get to see your work everywhere. You get to see the application of your work as you walk into the office, as you go home and turn your lights on, as if there's a storm coming through, um, you get to see how, how good a job you're doing.